There you go. And Eric is triumphant. As long as he doesn't burn himself. Alright. This is the basic <clears throat> this is the basic kit. This is the basic guy. We're gonna take Kurt. How's it going everyone? Okay. This is where we're at now. We're gonna go up over in here. And we're gonna lay him out. <clears throat> this is the gear he's gonna take. His objective is to be able to start a fire and cook a meal. We got a hatchet, we got a mess kit, we got a flashlight, LED, low power usage, aluminum cup, uh, secondary flashlight, flint strike, partially gone, compass with a thermos <clears throat> with a thermometer on it wind chill chart on the back alright we got a pocket knife sharp <clears throat> he's got some scissors constitution gotta have constitution survival handbook extra set of gloves a hat <clears throat> a regular hat that we've cut a regular hat that we have cut into to create a face mask camouflage bag right side is flint steel knife to light it and to cut things with is on the left keep these handy keep that up put that away for now but I hate doing that uh, I believe it's the 26th of January um, tell you what this is gonna be hard trying to start a fire with just a knife and a flint ready to roll Wish me luck, everyone. <laughs> yeah, Michigan's an open carry state. But if you walk down the road, or you're walking around in the woods with a gun, they will stop you. Yeah, there's no reason. By law, it's Michigan law, I believe I am entitled to, dr to drive on my motorcycle with a weapon if I had planned to take it out target shooting. Okay? Right. So it's also... Right, yeah. It's an open carry state, so technically I should be able to have a gun, a pistol, strapped to my side I of my hip. Open carry, you can see it. Ammo on the side. I called the state police. I asked them if I did that. Well, is that, you know, is that kosher? They say, well, hell no. We'll pull you over. And I said, but it's legal. Yes. That doesn't make any sense. But we will stop you and they will arrest you they will detain you, and then they will let you go. It's ridiculous, man. So hopefully, us heading out here to take care of this little survival issue, it never comes to where we really need to defend the Second Amendment to that degree. I mean, at least we're legally still bound where we can have them. When it becomes a point where we don't, where we can't have them anymore. I think that's when people will be carrying you know. them. That's when act, that's when activism becomes action. Exactly. The Second Amendment is the only amendment that activates itself when it's being attacked, when it's in threat threat of being taken away. That's it's almost like it's security, it's safety clause. Right. No. Now this is. Uh, Blair Town Hall Road. This will take you all the way through to Hoosier, through Hoosier Valley. Yep. On the south side of Travers, in Grand Travers County. Yep, to 37, I think it is. I believe it's like 20 degrees right now. We'll get that reading as soon as we get out. Mm, yeah. All right, right. This is some really prime country. I went deer hunting out here couple months back and uh, I didn't see a lot of bucks but there was some sign a lot of snowmobiles there is uh, some wolves probably in the area uh, black bears maybe bobcat oh that's a big one <laughs> no doubt. I might have to lock it four by here another advantage of a uh, when you're in a prepper's vehicle such as this, you want to have manual locking hubs. 
they're die hard. They're not something that's going to break real easy unless you're pushing it. Um, automatic locking hubs often fail when they get messed up with dirt and all that. Not just that, right. but it'd be electronic. I'll throw her in now. I usually make a policy when I'm driving around that I should be able to get out of anything in four wheel that I get into in two wheel. But a lot of times, the opposite is a factor. You get, you get going and you get into a mud pit in two wheel drive and you've lost your momentum. So when you go to throw it in four wheel and, and take off from a dead stop in, in a vacuum of mud, <coughs> makes it more difficult. It does, you, you can't do it sometimes. You end up digging a hole in high center in yourself. So what you want to do is you want to be in, in four wheel drive before you need it, rather than after, in a prepping type position. Yep. Exactly, being the drivers we are. Be the driver. Being the driver. Well, not literally. <laughs> well, this is my prepping vehicle. This is a, you know an 88 GMC Suburban, 350 700R4. Not the best tranny, but you know, it'll seat seven people. The hall, my furnace, all my prepping gear. My, I've got four children. Safari rack, put a winch on the front, six inch lift, 33 inch super swampers. Oh, yeah. um, that's what I'm, that's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need to fill that tank <laughs> once, <laughs> and then yeah, that's 33 gallons. You're talking like a, over a hundred dollars right now oh, with easy. the prices. <laughs> if the prices shoot up any further, yeah. Good luck there. We're yeah. probably going to see $4 a gallon here this summer, my friend, like we did before. Four times 32. <laughs> yeah. Over $120. 128. All right, now, this is kind of like a snowmobile trail that we're on now. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay, because it's already in four wheel. Probably the first step in survival when you got one of these is definitely don't get stuck. That's a huge part of surviving. Oh. That's what's nice about having a community of friends in the survival aspect of it. People helping each other out in a community.